Allow me for a moment to be nostalgic. And forgive me if this comes off as a bit back in my day, I appreciate games have come a long way since sharp polygonal graphics and 5 minute loading screens, but back in my day when you bought a game, you bought it safe in the knowledge that what you were going to be playing would at least carry a certain amount of quality and polish. Bugs and glitches still existed, obviously, and I'm not saying every game released before the birth of the internet and downloadable updates was perfect. That's demonstrably untrue. But as I watched Jedi Survivor occasionally stutter to a complete halt last week as the frames jammed themselves into the door frame of my PC, and as Redfall completely failed to load in anything that could be remotely described as a texture the first time I played a match, I found myself thinking, well, isn't this all getting just a little bit silly? And look, it's not exactly a new problem, is it? Games have been accused of being released unfinished for up to a decade now, but there does seem to be a growing issue of games being rushed out for launch with the hope that that most fickle of beasts, the day one patch, will magically paper over any large holes accidentally left behind by the devs as they flick the lights off. There's a tendency among us in the larger gaming community to take the well-trodden path of the cynic when it comes to unfinished game releases. The publishers pressured the devs to deliver on unreasonable timescales so they could maximise their launch sales. Why would they spend time on making a good game that works exactly as it should when people will still buy a hot mess that barely runs if it has something like Star Wars attached to it? Or the simple but equally annoying and untrue, the devs don't really care about what the game looks like. Obviously they do, they built the bloody thing. So why then have we ended up in a two week hell spiral of two of the most anticipated games of the year suddenly being absolutely tanked by players for coming out the oven underbaked? Especially on PC, but Jedi Survivor still had problems on console. Ultimately, it comes down to the fact that, in general, even if we don't like it, it's become a viable business plan for those who make the decisions for when games should release. Look at No Man's Sky as a prime example. Now that was an unfinished game to a whole new level when it released, but steadily, over time, the game got more and more content as the devs continuously worked on it, and today it's loved by players who are still exploring its many worlds years after release. Time and progress made the majority forget just how bad things were on day one. And since the game has ultimately become what you could call a success, well, maybe the decision to release it before it was even mixed properly, let alone had seen the inside of an oven, was the right one in the end. But that doesn't feel right, does it? Why should people have to pay upwards of $60 or $70 just to essentially beta test a game? Why should people be happy with games released in a way that makes them, if not quite unplayable, certainly less fun and more annoying? Well, again, it comes down to the money argument. If fixing something post-release will cost less money than fixing it before release, or, gods forbid, it would actually delay the game from hitting stores, well, the business as a whole has to take that into account. It's sad, but it's the world we live in. And when big publishers give the teams working on games the opportunity to take longer over a game, something which has become clearly more and more common as game release dates have largely become less set in stone and more set in running water, they don't even always take them up on it. In a recent interview with IGN, Jedi Survivor's director revealed that he'd actually turned down the chance to take extra dev time from EA so that they wouldn't have to compete with the likes of The Legend of Zelda for airtime on release. And it's a tricky balance to maintain. Would holding back the release date have led to a more polished and ultimately finished game hitting shelves? Well, yes. But would the delay have meant less sales and less hype if it came after the release of a sequel that players have been waiting almost an entire console's life cycle for? Well, probably also yes. So while you might think developers would bite the hand off any publisher giving them more time, and there may well be devs at Respawn currently cursing the name of Stig Asmussen for refusing the chance, they have equal concerns over the game performing as well as it can. The question is whether it was worth the trade-off of Jedi Survivor getting a bad rep for failing to deliver a quality finished game, especially on PC, and the negative reviews and publicity are worth it. Thanks to modern day gaming making it easier than ever for devs to tweak our games with fixes and new content as soon as they're ready, as much as I hate to admit it, it probably was the right call from a business perspective. But ultimately it's just made the experiences of the players worse. Redfall, on the other hand, actually had the chance to take more time and come up good. It was originally slated for release back in 2022, so who knows what it would have looked like then. Instead, it seems to have existed just in a state of development hell, with a team who had delivered massive success with the likes of Prey and the Dishonored series, branching out into a looter-shooter genre that they'd never had to tackle before. Perhaps it's a little harsh to lump Redfall and Jedi Survivor together in this way. One has, to its credit, been vaunted not only as one of the best Star Wars games ever made, but also one of the best games made this year, period while Redfall's launch can aptly be described as somewhere between mid and deadfall. But both represent a big problem in the gaming world right now in two very distinct ways, so stick with me. Redfall is what happens when a troubled development cycle leads devs into making a game it didn't seem like they ever really wanted to make. Why would Arcane be the choice for a looter shooter when their immersion sims are what made them famous and forced to once again scream into the void? And ultimately, they're pushed into, through one force or another, releasing a game that was underdone in basically every possible way, both technically and creatively. 
creatively, and Bethesda's decision to release the game just after what was widely expected to be one of the biggest games of the year, and with a frankly ludicrous embargo time for reviews to boot, I get it's a vampire game, but forcing half the world to stay up into the night to see Redfall's launch was a step beyond the usual level of immersion I'd expect from a looter shooter, just seems even more weird and proof that it was more about getting it out fast than getting it out finished. It's like Aesop's Fable, except the tortoise is brutally murdered by a vampire hare clipping through a door frame. Jedi Survivor, on the other hand, has fallen victim to the idea that a game has to have the biggest impact it can possibly have within its first week, or month if we're being generous, before it's decided whether it was a flop or a game of the year contender. The decision by the director of Jedi Survivor to not delay by another six weeks did mean that the game didn't have to compete in an ever-changing gaming news, guides and hype cycle with the behemoth that is the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, but it also meant that the game's Steam page is filled with more negative reviews than the Death Star's health and safety department. I suppose in the grand scheme of things, Jedi Survivor has been proved right to take the risk. Despite the fan backlash, the game scored incredibly positively, and once all this chat about performance issues is packed off to a distant planet by the next big news story, it'll take its place among the Game of the Year content with few complaints I have no doubt, but Redfall has really been thrown under the bus by this kind of fix it later mentality rearing its ugly head again. Now would Redfall have been a good game in another six weeks? Well that depends on how much you like looter shooters and engage with the story, I guess, because while it was riddled with performance issues and bugs on launch, the core gameplay didn't give us that much to write home about either. But Jedi Survivor absolutely would have been, and Redfall might have taken less flack overall if its gameplay loop wasn't being constantly interrupted and undermined by everything else going wrong around it. Gone are the days when a game could just release completely finished. Even players are guilty of always asking for more, be that in DLC or follow-ups, and really, is a game ever finished as long as it has devs to work on it? The truth is, there are a plethora of reasons that games release unfinished, but the question is which ones can be forgiven and which can't be forgotten. Those are our thoughts anyway. What's your take on devs and publishers releasing quote-unquote unfinished games? Whether you're a player, a dev, or anything in between, let's get a conversation going in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and check out these videos if you want to see more of what we do.